Today we're going to be working on an equilibrium example and we're going to be doing one with uh, massive beams that have masses attached to it. All right, let's go. So here is our physical setup. We have a beam. This is the beam right here. And the beam has an overall length of L and it has a mass of M. It is sitting on top of something that it can rotate about, and that thing is a distance of about a quarter L from the left-hand side of the beam. Now, hanging from the left-hand side of the beam is a mass, having a mass of 3M, and then over on the right side of the beam, we have some sort of object which has a mass uh, that is unknown to us. And so the question is, in equilibrium, what is that mass? So we know that in equilibrium, the sum of forces is equal to zero, and the sum of torques is equal to zero. So we're not really worried about the sum of forces because that is going to add up to zero. But what's more interesting in this case is the sum of the torques. And so we have three torques here. There is the torque that the beam exerts, because remember the beam has mass, and it exerts it's about its center of mass. And so the center of mass, since it's a beam of uniform density, is somewhere right around here. And of course, its mass is being pulled downward. Um, there is the left mass, which of course is also being pulled downward. And then finally, there is the right mass, which is also being pulled downward. And so those are the three torques that are going to be exerted around the uh, pivot point, which is right here. And so what we can do is use the right hand rule and we're going to say that uh, torque, because it's a cross product, uh, remember torque is just defined as R cross F and R goes from the pivot point to, you know, in this it goes to from the from the pivot point to the mass of the beam to our mystery mass over here on the right to our known mass over here. So what we can do is we can figure out all of these different radii. And we can also uh, use the right hand rule to decide what direction the torque points. So for the beam itself, remember your pointer finger goes in the direction of towards the, of the radius vector, curls in the direction of the force, which in this case is weight pointing down. And then for the beam, we find that the beam, the torque goes into the page. For the mass on the left, our radius vector starts at the center of rotation, goes to here, and then the force points down. So R cross F, so the torque due to the left mass points out. And then over here for the right hand mass, it goes from the pivot point to where the mass is being exerted. So, and then the mass, whatever the mass it is, the force points down. So again, the uh, torque is in the negative direction into the screen. All right, so the next thing we need to do is calculate all of our torques. So we're going to calculate the magnitudes of all the torques. So what we are going to do first is calculate the magnitude of the torque on the beam. And recall, it's R cross F. Now in this particular case, we know that the uh, all of the angles are right angles. So in this case, the magnitude of the torque on the beam is just going to be the magnitude of the radius vector times the magnitude of the force vector because otherwise it would be you know and then it would be times sine theta except theta is 90 degrees so it's just sine of theta is one so the radius vector since we're talking about the beam it starts over here from the pivot point and goes to the center of mass the whole beam has a length of l one quarter l is to the left of the beam uh, I'm sorry, to the left of the pivot point, so our radius vector is 1 fourth L. So that means that this is 1 fourth L for our radius vector. And then the force is just the weight of the beam, so it's capital M times G. And then again, this is in the minus direction, it's into the screen. The magnitude of the torque due to the left mass is going to be equal to, oops, let's put those vectors on there. It's going to be equal to the same thing, R cross F. And so in this case, we have 1 fourth L as our radius vector. And then, so that's going to be 1 fourth L times the mass, which is 3M 
times g to make it a weight, so it's a force, and that's going to be asked in the positive direction. It's going to be out of the screen. And then finally, our mystery mass, the right mass, the magnitude of the torque due to that is going to be, well, it has a, it is a distance of 3 fourths L on the right hand side times we have to give it a little a mass, so we're just going to call it little m, that's the unknown, times gravity, that's the force due to its weight. And then, as before, we know that this is going in the negative direction. All right, so now we need to actually write all this stuff down. Okay, so writing this all down, we're going to go back to our sum of torques. So the torque of the beam plus the torque of the left mass plus the torque of the right mass has to be equal to zero. So I can take those three expressions that I just wrote down and say minus one-fourth LMG, which is the torque of the, ve the beam, plus three-fourths LMG minus three-fourths L little m g are equal to zero. And so then what I can do is see what cancels out. So the L and the G cancel out of each one of these terms. And so that just leaves me with a bunch of masses. And I can see that, uh, what do we have here? We have minus one-fourth M plus three-fourths M minus three-fourths little m are equal to zero. And so that's going to give me a plus one-half m minus three-fourths m is equal to zero. And so then when I go ahead and solve, that shows me that little m is equal to two-thirds capital M. And so that's the answer. So the uh, the mass, the mystery mass, is two-thirds capital M. So it's two-thirds the mass of the beam. And so essentially, the way that we have done this is by realizing that in equilibrium, the sum of torques is equal to zero, figuring out the torques for the three individual components, the massive beam, the uh, block hanging off the left side with a mass of 3M, and then our mystery block over here, and saying that in equilibrium, those three torques must be zero, uh, writing down the, exactly what that must be, summing it all up, and solving for our unknown, which is the small mass, uh, which was the lowercase m. And there you go. Thank you very much.